value viewers, I hope you are all doing very well. Today's video is about the United States' first steam turbine locomotive built by General Electric for the Union Pacific Railroad, and they are the GE-1 and the GE-2. Enjoy. This revolutionary steam turbine built by the General Electric Company for the Union Pacific Railroad was the first of its sort in North America. It was a further example of the late 1930s steam locomotive inventiveness. When it was delivered in mid-1939, it was heralded as the new king of the rails, a replacement for steam and a successor to the diesel. Of which such a claim by any United States Railroad Company is to be expected. These new locomotives were built at General Electric shops at Erie, Pennsylvania, and this locomotive represented the cooperative efforts of the General Electric and Union Pacific Research Engineers in doing what had never been done before, which was installing a high-pressure condensing turbine electric power plant in a railroad locomotive. A steam turbine drove a generator which supplied electrical current to the six electric motors on the axles. Since the steam was condensed and returned to the boiler, the locomotive had to carry less water than a standard steam engine and it could travel as far as 500 to 700 miles between water and fuel stops. The design was made to duplicate two 2500 horsepower cab units coupled back to back with operating controls at outer ends. Each unit was self-contained and independently operable. The styling of America's first steam turbine electric resembled the Union Pacific's first city of Denver, except with less personality. The turbine's nose lacked the Denver's interesting automotive grill and appeared bulbous and swollen. The turbine was tested extensively in the West shortly after it was delivered to the Union Pacific in April of 1939. In the later part of April of 1939, the twin locomotives moved on an exhibition tour from Chicago all the way through Washington, D.C. And while at the nation's capital, a private exhibition was given to President Roosevelt. From there, the steam electric returned home via Pittsburgh through Kansas City, and then on to Omaha. In mid-May, in need of dire repair after a lengthy tour, the locomotive returned to Union Pacific's Omaha shops. On account of its being an advanced and unique design, it was only natural that there would be problems with the engine. But this new turbine locomotive had way more than it was expected. And though it ran occasionally and irregularly, the big experimental locomotive never ran smoothly enough to be assigned to regular service. When it did run, it was usually way behind schedule. The steam electric continued to be plagued by mechanical troubles, spending most of its time in some repair shop. In 1939, the General Electric Review claimed that each of the steam turbine locomotives could attain speeds of 125 miles per hour and that they had two times the conventional steam locomotive's thermal efficiency. Fully loaded, each of the two locomotives weighed 548,000 pounds. Each could produce 86,500 pounds of tractive effort and between 32,000 pounds of force and up to 40,500 pounds of force of continuous tractive effort depending on the amount of cooling. Both of the locomotives had Babcox and Wilcox water tube boilers as well as specialized Bailey Meter Company equipment designed to automatically fire and regulate the boiler. Each boiler regularly operated at 920 degrees Fahrenheit and 1,500 pounds per square inch to 1,600 pounds per square inch of boiler pressure, which was a boiler pressure higher than that of any extant steam locomotive and much higher than contemporary conventional steam locomotives. And the GE-1 and GE-2 locomotives stored enough oil to give them an operating range of 500 to 700 miles. The turbines were designed to operate at 12,500 RPMs and were paired with a generator set to a 10 to 1 reduction gearing. A twin armature DC generator was used to power the traction motors, while a three-phase 220 volt alternating current generator powered auxiliary functions such as the traction mower blowers and providing head-in power, with the latter of which provided the lighting, heating, and air conditioning to the passenger cars. And that was unusual in 1939 and not, it would not become standard until the 1970s. The locomotives also used a gear ratio of 65 to 31, as well as driving wheels were a diameter of 44 inches, and they had 36 inch diameter guide and trailing wheels. Each unit also had two plus C minus C plus two wheel arrangements. 
And even though these locomotives were sold to the Union Pacific together and promoted as a single 5,000 horsepower locomotive, the two units were capable of operation independently of each other. As previously mentioned, these locomotives never entered frontline service, but they did work on several routes in a variety of different capacities, including both passenger and perishable freight service, although, once again, they never entered regular revenue service. Because of the myriad of uh, problems with these locomotives, in June of 1939, the railroad returned them to General Electric in Chicago for what Union Pacific President W.M. Jeffers called necessary modification and or reconstruction. And whilst the Union Pacific retained interest in the concept of steam turbine locomotives for over the next two years, in December of 1941, the Union Pacific decided to end its agreement with General Electric. And this was mostly to be believed because of the development of other, of other locomotive types by the Union Pacific, such as the 4884 Big Boy. And also the Union Pacific had already started purchasing uh, diesels, E-units, and FT freight diesels as well. General Electric continued to work on its steam turbine locomotives after the Union Pacific lost interest. In 1941, the New York Central tested them along its water level route in New York. During the power crunch on American railroads caused by World War II, in 1943 the steam turbine locomotives were operated by the Great Northern between Spokane and Wenatchee, Washington. By that point, they had been repainted to dark gray and renumbered GE1 and GE2. According to a number of sources, including the Streamliner, they provided satisfactory service for the Great Northern. By late 1943, the locomotives were retired from service and returned to General Electric. They were scrapped before the end of the World War II. The General Electric steam turbine locomotives were both the first turbine locomotives to be built in North America, as well as General Electric's only steam-powered locomotives. Union Pacific historian Alfred Bruce described the design as one of the most exceptional steam locomotives ever built. And with that, the following specifications apply to the Union Pacific GE1 and GE2 steam turbine. The overall length of the locomotive was 90 feet 10 inches, the width was 10 feet, the height was 15 feet 3 quarters of an inch, the locomotive weight was 548,000 pounds, the revolution's permanent range was 12,500 pounds, the boiler pressure was 1,500 pounds per square inch, up to 1,600 pounds per square inch. The maximum speed of this locomotive was 125 miles per hour. Power output was 2,500 horsepower. Tractive effort was starting at 86,500 pounds. These locomotives entered service in April of 1935. They were withdrawn from service in June of 1939 and withdrawn again from service from the Great Northern Railroad in 1943 and then subsequently scrapped. The leading wheels were 36 inches, the driver diameter was 44 inches, and the trailing wheels were 36 inches. And with that, we'll wrap up the video. I'll end the video by saying thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed today's content, please hit the like button. And also, if you're not subscribed, please subscribe. Both features help the channel grow immensely. And turn on all of your notifications if you want to see all of our videos that we upload, which is one or two a day. And also, if you want to support the channel's efforts outside of the super stickers or the super thanks, visit our print shop at Nickel Plate Limited at Etsy.com. And we thank you once again.